It was found by accident. That's when the mass first showed up. Those of us who are stage three and above, the survival rate is 29%. I went to my GYN and he confirmed that indeed I did have ovarian cancer. I'm Stella Farwell and I live on Captiva Island. I had surgery in January of 08, then I had chemo, then in June of 09 the cancer recurred and I had chemo again. And then in December of 09, it had metastasized to my left lung, and so I had radiation. Hi, I'm Stella. Yes. Welcome. Thank I'd you. like to give you each one of these little blinky lights. Um, it has a magnet. May I put it on your sure. shirt? Sure, sure. Teal color is the ovarian cancer color. Uh -huh. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. And like breast cancer uh -huh. is pink. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they're blinking, so remember that any time you see something blink, think ovarian cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. And think about all the things that blink, like turn signals. Mm -hmm. What else can you think of that blinks? Traffic lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aids to navigation. Yes, right. yes, yes. Airplanes in flight. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Mm -hmm. This is a magnet yes. for, for the car. car. And okay, then if good. you push this out, you have a little right. magnet for your bicycle or your refrigerator. Oh. So we're at Big Arts on Sanibel Island, and we're in the Founders Gallery. This piece is called Ups and Downs, and it represents the roller coaster of emotions that go with this illness. This piece kind of oh, invented itself, if you will. Um, I was looking for a different material and happened across these tubes, and I just had to have them. I wasn't, had no idea what I was going to do with them. It just fascinates me that the ends of these tubes light up and it, there isn't a light source involved in this except the light in the room. But it appears that the end of the tube is lighted. And I just, I was fascinated by that. Plastic tubes. And I have no idea what their original purpose was. It sort of evolved. It wasn't, um, I wasn't out to, to tie the two, my work and the ovarian cancer together, but it evolved that way. Of the artwork that's in the exhibit here, seven pieces are influenced by the ovarian cancer journey. I guess I was so focused on the art that I really wasn't thinking about how it affected me. It was about creating the piece and what I wanted to say and technically how to make it happen. The piece above the door here is layers and that represents all the multiple layers of stuff that are out there, layers of frustration, layers of fear, layers of waiting, all those things. But sometimes when you strip away those layers, you find a happy surprise underneath. And this piece is handmade paper um, with a liquid acrylic paint. This piece um, is called Fun, and um, when you're going through all this difficult, scary stuff, sometimes it's nice just to stop and do something that's fun. So that's what this represents. Hopefully it looks very spontaneous and simple. It actually was one of the harder, harder pieces to achieve. So I did it this way, and then this one went this way. Most paint would only stay for that much. And then the rest of it, it, there wasn't enough paint. And if you tried to start over, you'd get a lump. So it was um, a process of finding something that would adhere, that would carry the paint and adhere to the plexiglass hopefully gives you the feeling of smiling, having fun, and being spontaneous. The cure rate, if it's caught early, is excellent. I mean, it's misdiagnosed a lot of times. The, the problem is the, the symptoms are very, um, even if you have the ovarian cancer symptoms, which I did not, but even if you do, there are symptoms of so many other things. So women don't recognize the symptoms as ovarian cancer. And many times the healthcare provider does not recognize the symptoms. I was stage 3C when I had the surgery. So that's why they call it the silent killer because it's not caught usually until very late. What it's done for me is 
kept me focused on what I do rather than being um, having cancer become my whole life. My life is still my art. And um, it, if I hadn't had that to focus on, I don't know how things would have worked out. This is evolving and it's coming from the feeling of being in a very tight, closed place, finally being able to work your way out of it back into the air and the brightness. And it is 300 pound watercolor that's been cut out and then painted with liquid acrylic. This is called cooperation, and this handmade paper was made by a breast cancer survivor friend in New Orleans. She made it in a workshop and sent it to me and said, maybe you can do something with this paper. This is what I did. <laughs> cooperation between the two of us. One of the things I'm trying to do now is to raise awareness of ovarian cancer. There is no organization in our area who, who does this. And um, so it's kind of my one person campaign to um, make people aware. And it can move pretty quickly. Eight months is, can be quite a while and that's how long I was sick before it was diagnosed. If a woman is having medical problems and they're not getting resolved, she should see her OBGYN and rule out ovarian cancer. And I just wish somebody had made me aware of that. I just really want to spend my time and energy locally making people aware of ovarian cancer. That's what I'm trying to do. This is endless chains of hope. Hope is something that's very important to keep in the forefront. The piece actually looks extremely simple. It had lots of hysterical things, things that fell apart. To find the chain was another problem. I found the chain, but I was going to paint it, but the chain would, would not accept any kind of paint. So anyway, I finally found some chain that was in colors and the whole thing came together and it got finished just before time for installation. So uh, any, it looks very simple, but it took a long time to, to get it to happen. I have, have lost two very dear friends to ovarian cancer in the past year and a half. There is no screening test and that's the, that's the really scary thing about this disease. My symptoms were a collection of strange things that none of which would be on the list for ovarian cancer symptoms. So if you're having something weird going on with your body, just get it checked out. This is standing free, and this one represents standing up to the disease of ovarian cancer. And actually this piece presented lots of challenges to make it happen. It was a long process, but it started out as a flat piece of paper, then it got to be something that we could twist and bend. And for a while it had like, at the place you wanted it to bend fishing line that we could adjust so we could get the bend in the right place. And then it was fiberglassed over once we got the shape. This is probably one of my most important pieces in, in terms of the technical challenges and also what it says, which is standing up to ovarian cancer. I hope that each of you will help me spread the word by making 10 people aware of ovarian cancer. I really want to emphasize that there is no screening test for ovarian cancer. It's not like going to get a mammogram. The only choice you have as a woman if you're not feeling well, if something weird's going on with your body, is to go to see your OBGYN and have them, specifically have them rule out ovarian cancer. Well, the artwork is just, it's what I do, so um, I'm glad I can continue to do it. Um, it's, uh, it has been, I think very good to have it to focus on um, while I'm going through this journey because I'm not s sitting around think feeling sorry for myself. I've got too much work to do. And I'm fortunate to have a very loving, caring, supportive husband, just great kids who just jumped in and helped us constantly. I guess the good thing about having this disease is I found out how many wonderful people there are out there who, who do care. Remember that anytime you see something blink, think ovarian cancer awareness.